you probably seen plenty about China's robots. There's no question that humanoid robotics has become one of China's hottest topics in 2025. Does it remind you of Transformers Bumblebee? Right now, there are nearly 900,000 companies in related fields operating across the country. Investment is pouring in, industrial chains are expanding, and a wave of events is taking place. Oh, oh. But in this tech-savvy society, non-humanoid robots are already everywhere. So why does China want these human-like robots so much? <laughs> It seemed like a quiet summer break day at this local high school. But inside the building, the real action was happening. This is a humanoid robotics competition attracting hundreds of middle and high school students from around the globe. They're competing to see who can best program robots to perform tasks like moving, recognizing, and grabbing, all based on the algorithms they've created. Two days ago, 77 teams from 61 countries and regions received the same set of tasks at the same time. And now they're inside these rooms, busy brainstorming and coding for their programs. So I'd better keep my voice down, not to break their focus. Hours later, the top 10 teams were out for the final real-world robot test, based on their simulation results. One of the most uh, difficult things is that these are real robots in real life and not a simulation. So we have to take into consideration, for example, that it has some momentum and it can't stop in the moment. Yeah, so there, there are so, some barriers in the real life that you don't see in the simulation. And I have zero clue about the intricacies of their code, but I do get the idea of the results they are aiming for. The robot starts from there and comes to this corner pick up the things on the table and drop them into the basket, bring the basket, put it on the shelves, and finally it has to position itself in the last corner. Plus, the robot has to avoid all the cones on the field along the way. Not an easy job for these young minds. No team has pulled off a perfect home run. Programming a robot properly is much more challenging than everyone may expect. So for high school students, it may be their first time to program on a real robot. And there may be bugs, maybe improper algorithms that may cause the robot to stop unexpectedly so that they have to frequently debug for the issue, fix them, and try again. Shi Xuesong is the host of the contest. His company, the Beijing-based robot maker Gaobot, provided all the robots used here. Here you go. Just two days later, Galbot was also showcasing at the World Robot Conference in the city, alongside more than 200 other companies with their latest innovations. See how crowded it is here! You can definitely feel people's excitement and eagerness for robots. Here, robots can do this, this, and this. It's not just for fun, these motion skills give robots versatility making them more capable of working in spaces designed for humans. Many of our products are already being used in highly dangerous scenarios, such as tunnel inspections and firefighting. In the future, humanoid robots could enter these high-risk environments first, using our equipment to get the job done and helping keep people out of harm's way. Compared with robotic arms, the real strength of humanoid robots isn't efficiency, it's their flexibility and versatility. Some robots are already in factories. Take Ubitech, the first humanoid robot company listed on the Hong Kong Stock Exchange. Its robots are trained for industrial tasks and are already at work in car factories like BYD and Zeker. They can sort, carry, and inspect. Jobs too dull for humans but too very for standalone robotic arms. Best of all, they can recharge and even swap their own batteries. We have seen a lot of human workers are still in factories. On the assembly line or some sorting line, human workers need to walk back and forth and uh, pick this work piece at this end and need to walk along the line to put this work piece on the cart. That's why we think a humanoid robot can help a lot. Basically, can do a lot of flexible jobs. Yes. According to a recent industry report, 
China's humanoid robot market is expected to hit 8.2 billion yuan in 2025, over 1 billion U.S. dollars, accounting for about half of the global total. So beyond factory work, will they be coming to our homes soon? What kind of robots are you looking for? Care robots. I want them to cook and do laundry for me. Sadly, that day may still be far off. It's not a humanoid robot, but it's very nice to have a massage here. Whoa, whoa, whoa! <laughs> the hand is warm. Right now, we still use robotic arms to get the work done. Looking ahead, the industry is aiming for more advanced, dexterous robotic hands with the right strength, flexibility, and technical capabilities. If the technology gets there, we could eventually build humanoid robots for physical therapy. But that will depend on broader breakthroughs in the field. By the middle of this century, China's elderly population could top 500 million, around 40 percent of the population. That makes humanoids as a future workforce a huge business opportunity. But honestly, I think the biggest reason we want humanoid robots is simply this: they look friendlier than cold-blooded machines, don't they? Oh, oh, maybe not always.